Finding a solid, pre-built, reasonably priced 75% keyboard is an effort unto itself, never mind trying to find one in a colorway other than solid white or black. One option you may not have come across yet is the Shuriki Gear Saizo. Priced at $140, it's got a lot going for it that's maybe a bit off the beaten trail in terms of where money might be spent, but today we're going to find out if they made the right choices here. Before we continue on any further, I just want to give a huge shout out to MechanicalKeyboards.com for sending this model over for review today. Bear in mind, however, this is not going to color our opinion of this board one way or another. Just ask the Philco Magis Touch. And if you're interested in anything discussed in today's video, affiliate links will be down in the video's description. The first thing that sticks out about the Sizo is those bright orange knobs. Those are used to control your LED lights, which can be any color you want as long as they're white, and volume. But why are they orange? There's also two lock state LEDs off to the left. They're not particularly bright, and from an efficiency perspective, I feel like an F13 key there might have made more sense, but what do you think? Comment down below. Otherwise, the plastic case incorporates about 20 millimeters of front height, 29 millimeter height at the rear with a slight inward slope, giving us sort of a speed wedge profile and an overall very comfy typing angle. You can further adjust this using the two stage feet on the bottom of the case. While the F-Row is collapsed in to provide a bit of room for both knobs, there is some explosion around the arrow keys and right side nav cluster. I think I'd like to see this combo on more keyboards since for me anyway, collapsing the F row just gives you more room for activities, but comment below if you prefer clusters of four F row keys instead. The board appears to have a tray mount design with a steel plate, though further disassembly won't be happening this time around as I sadly have to return this board. We'll touch on these switches in a bit. Now, this keyboard does provide you with Bluetooth connectivity as well, with up to three different devices, and it gives you a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, so you're not gonna run out of juice with this thing anytime soon, provided the LEDs are reasonably low or off. But during a recent live stream, we did actually observe some strange behavior while gaming in Bluetooth mode and playing Fallout 76 specifically. There were certain commands I had to enter twice for the game to register they were happening. When I hooked up a USB-C cable to the keyboard, the problem went away. It's also worth noting that I did not observe that same behavior while playing Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which is the other game I'm really big into right now. So just keep an eye out for how Bluetooth behaves in your game du jour. Your mileage may vary. That said, there doesn't seem to be any way to do custom mapping of the switches, though there are built-in function layer commands with side printed legends on the caps to let you know where they are. There's also a detachable USB-C connector, though if you use a cable with a chonky type C end to it, it may not fit in this board. The keycaps are cherry profile, double shot ABS, and frankly, probably nicer than a keyboard at this price point deserves. Supremely sharp and well aligned legends, vivid colors, an excellent surface feel with a sprue mark that's located on the underside of the cap to hide any of those unseemly manufacturing marks. In short, these give you a premium feeling and looking keycap without breaking the bank. If you vibe with the set but want to put it on your own board, they're sold as a more extensive standalone set for $69 at mechanicalkeyboards.com, links below. You do get some extra accent caps for this board, including for some strange reason, a numpad enter key. While I set up the caps at both extremes, and both carry merit, I ended up with a balance of the two, going with all teal mods and the pink space bar for what I consider to be the best balance of color saturation. I just wish the pink pink bar didn't have that giant Shuriki logo on it. The one at the front of the case does the job just fine for me, as does the shockingly attractive badge on the bottom of the keyboard. Speaking of space bars, they were both quite good in this kit, but with a caveat. See, while the stock plate mount stabs were pre-lubed and largely free of undesirable noises or ticking, they were a touch sluggish out of the box. This combined with swapping to the purple bar to discover the pink one had a slightly convex bend to it means the space bar started to tick on the left side. This was corrected with just a little bit of extra lube on the wire with a syringe. Basically what happened there was because the purple space bar was just a little more straight than the pink one, it ended up shifting the lube around in the stem and it didn't much care for that, hence the ticking we encountered. Now the switches. These are Varmillo ECV2 Sakura Linears, featuring a nylon bottom housing, polycarb top housing, palm stem, and a 55 gram spring. There's a few things to really like about this switch. For one, it's remarkably smooth for not being lubed. Two, they use what's referred to as an electrocapacitive leaf. This functions a bit differently from a typical keyboard switch, but if you want an honest professional review with a little bit more information as to how this works, check out Theremin Goat's article down in the video's description. The only issue I really had with the switches was a little bit of spring ping, but when you're sitting at a normal typing distance from it and you're using a desk mat specifically, you don't really notice the ping. 
I also feel like the stock acoustic treatments on this board are helping this out a lot. Unfortunately, because we can't take apart this board, I can't take a closer look at what's going on there. So instead, let's just take a listen to what the board sounds like. The Shuriki Saizo is doing things a bit differently compared to its similarly priced contemporaries. Gone are the macro keys, chunky form factor, and flashy RGB lighting, and in their place are some great electrocapacitive linear switches, actually nice keycaps, wireless connectivity, and a sound that's hard to replicate without extensive modding yourself. True, you can't remap keys like other more spendy boards, and it still needs a bit more refinement to punch above its weight class. But for what you pay here, this is a solid pick for a really enjoyable plug-and-play typing experience with a look that's anything but boring. And if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. You're the real goats. One more time, huge shout out and thank you to MechanicalKeyboards.com for shipping out the Shuriki Saizo for us to take a look at today. Remember, affiliate links for this and other stuff in today's video are down in the video's description. And if you make any other purchases through MechanicalKeyboards.com, make sure you check out with creator code TheManicGeek. It's a free way to help support the channel. And until next time, take care, everyone.